there. Here we go. Back to the Jaguars. Jiggly the General is back on the clock picking for the Jaguars. Let's see. You know, they have their quarterback now. Tight end, tackle, safety. Who do they go for? Daniel Schapp, I'll give you the bucks, and then we're done. Everybody's every team is spoken for. I like it. And quite a quite a few defensive players here. All of these uh top players right here, the top six, besides Terrence Marshall. These are all defensive players. Uh yep. defensive interior, linebacker, corner, edge, edge, wide receiver, corner, edge. You know, lots of defensive players left. And still Rondell Moore is up yep. there. Terrence Marshall. Terrence Marshall. There. And look, if I'm the Saints or the Ravens uh, or even the Packers, I love that list of defenders. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that ends up happening, um, you know, come tomorrow night. I think a lot of these players are taken instead of so many receivers. Definitely not going to be two running backs selected by now. Um, yeah. So we'll see. I say we we make the pick for uh, the Jaguars. It doesn't look like Jiggly's uh, on anymore. So whoever types in their pick next gets to make the pick. And I think uh, coming up, the Ravens, I did a, a little project for school on making a draft plan for the Ravens. I could see them going edge at 27. Initially, I thought that they were going to maybe trade up and, and go um, wide receiver, try and get one of those top three wide receivers, uh, or maybe get one of the top three tackles in the draft. But seeing that Vera Tucker just went right like right before them is tough. Uh, I think yeah. they might they might try to get to Ben Jenkins still. Yep. Um, and now that they have that other pick uh, right here, they could maybe go wide receiver or edge, depending on who's left here. You got to love a school that you can make a draft plan for the NFL. That's a great uh, assignment to have. All right. No one wants to make this pick. Somebody make the pick for the Jaguars. Anybody. Notre Dame tackle. NDSU. No, North Dakota State. Or North Dakota State. That was the oh, one I talked Radden's, about earlier. All right. Radden's going. Boom. Jaguars taking them. Done. I like it. All right, for the Browns, we have D-Shap123 picking for the Browns. Browns Maybe. with a great season last year, beat the Steelers in the playoffs. I like to remind everyone on here about that. Um, and they have to be smart with this draft, okay? They have their skill players. They need to, to rebuild or, or build on the success of their offensive, defensive lines, linebacker, whatever. So D-Shap takes Jeremiah Owusu. Oh, and it, I mean that's a that's a great pick for them. Good uh, good ADP there. They also did need a uh, defensive interior, you see, and Barnwell yeah. there. But going Jeremiah, boom. Barnwell right, definitely dropped. The Ravens are by our book has the Ravens. Um, Barnwell has really dropped. It's it's really interesting. You know, me picking at twenty eight. That's not one of the needs of the Saints, but you know. 12th overall ranked ADP of 20. Yeah, that, uh, that ADP staring you in the face. That's that's a tough one. If this was a fantasy draft, I'd be like biting my fingernails just saying, don't pick him, don't pick him. I might have to trade up with the Patriots from 46. No, no, sorry. This is a <laughs> one-round draft. You are done. You already traded up and got your wide receiver. So. Got my waddle, so. Yep. All right, Book, you're on the clock. Let's go. Let's pick for the Ravens and then hang around because you got another pick coming at 31. And then meanwhile, Brian's here thinking about who he's taking at 28. Yep. Jenkins. Boom. There he is. Tevin. Good, good, good tackle. Definitely first round talent. I think that's a great pick for the Ravens at 27. Um, considering all of the other good tackles were off the board at that point. Yep. And I think that they caught a break there that Raddens went 25 because I think this could easily have been the other way around. For sure, for sure. Okay, the New Orleans Saints. What I would love to do is pick with my heart and take Terrace Marshall Jr. I think he would be an unbelievable addition to a wide receiver core that has very little speed. That's all about possession receivers. However, we got to do something on the defensive side. Lost too many, lost Janoris Jenkins in the offseason. So I'm going with Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. Uh, it just seems like that's a match made for, for what the Saints are going to be able to do with all the mock drafts I've looked at. And so I think that's – I'm glad that he dropped. He's like the fourth defensive player to come off the board, and I'm going to let Barmore drop some more. And that's just – you You got to know that that's a real pick for Brian because for a wide receiver to still be on the board and he's from LSU, yeah. and for him to not take him – that's right. He's picking – He's he knows what's best for his team there. I'm very right. shocked that that LSU – 
Uh, no, no. Off the, board there. the Saints do not like picking LSU guys for some reason, but uh, just like you did, I'm just going to trade up from the second round and uh, jump up and grab Terrace Marshall at the beginning of the second round. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Bevins up with the Packers now. Yep. Uh, if Bevins is still here. Yeah, Bevins, uh, looking at the Packers, great season last year, came up a little bit short in the NFC Championship game. They would love to have a wide receiver. Can you imagine Terrace Marshall's speed with um, Aaron Rodgers? That'd be a great match, but linebacker, cornerback as well. And then you have Christian Barmore. Somebody has to pick him. Yeah, and it looks like Bevins is going to go Terrence Marshall here as the, the number two receiver Yep. Uh, in Green Bay behind Devontae Adams. I guess Alan Lazard doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, or, I mean, Marquez Valdez Scanling can't really catch a pass beyond 30 yards anyway. All right. So we got the Bills at 30. Alpha Dog. Alpha Dog's got the pick. They need an interior defensive lineman, and there's one just sitting there in the draft room. He keeps drinking the water. You know, he's ready to walk out on stage. Let him go. Alpha Dog, just say the word, and he's off the board. That's right. Or maybe he goes Rondell Moore. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a chance. Look, the Bills could use a wide receiver. They could also use Edge. And yeah. There's two, two great Edge right here. This is exactly where Barmore should go. It's funny. They need defensive interior Edge cornerback, and then that's – Oh, what, are you – is that the pick? Is Quiddy Pay the pick, or is that just a comment about his ability to rush? That's the question. I believe that that is the pick. I think so. we have to take that as the pick. So. Barmore, come on. You can't go to the Bucks. You just can't. All right, Book, you're back up with the Ravens. I know the Ravens would love an interior defensive lineman too, but um, let's see what they go with. Do they? I think I think a realistic pick for them is actually Jason OF right here, mm -hmm. uh, Edge, Penn State. I think that that's a very realistic possibility for them. I know that they need to add to the edge after losing – uh, a few players on the defensive side. They lost Matt Judon, who's not an edge, but was definitely part of their pass rush to yeah. my New England Patriots. So I'm thinking who maybe... Their, who was their first pick at 27? To Van Jenkins. Oh, yeah. So they got a tackle. Okay. All right, Book, you're up. Up to pick for the uh, Ravens again. And who's picking for the Bucks? The Bucks is Daniel Schapp to end it all. Come on. We can't give the Bucks Christian Barmore. We just can't do it. Plus That's their, more. <laughs> their needs is quarterback. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me just say they're not picking a quarterback. <laughs> oh, he wants to see the best wide receivers available. There you go. You got Darius Tony, another player I've seen picked in the first round here and there as well. Um, but you know, here they have him ranked 39th. We'll see what see what book does. Yeah, I don't see any of these guys past here going in the no. In the first round. These guys even are like third round, honestly. You get well, like yeah. Jack Palmer. Yeah, once you get past Brown, you're talking third, fourth round at that point. I've heard he's underrated, though. Amon Ra, St. Brown. Yeah, yeah. Pick the Purdue guy. No, that's Alpha, though. Do you think Tony's better than Moore? Why, why do you say that, Daniel Shab? I agree. I think Kadarius Tony is a great early second round pick. Um, yeah, I mean, look, they're both right there. You know, you're you're really splitting hairs. It, at that point, it depends on do you want height? Like, what do you? What are the pieces that you want? And there's the pick, Rondell Moore, wide receiver, Purdue, thirty first. I think this is also very realistic for the Ravens. I could see them doing exactly this: tackle mm -hmm. wide receiver at twenty seven and thirty one. That would be huge. That's exactly what they want. That's why they, I mean, obviously they just traded away Orlando Brown, so they need a tackle. But um, so we got Daniel Schapp on the clock for the Bucks. Then we're going to give Roger Goodell a break for the second round and let the deputy commissioner read all the picks. Mm -hmm. well, let's see, Daniel, you got. Um, oh, five, we got a, he's 5'9, by the way. He's not 5'7. Yeah. Details, details. I like it. There it is. Bar there it board. is. He finally gets out of the green room. That just means no one will ever run the ball against the Bucks again in the history of the franchise. Thanks for watching part four of our inaugural Pass the Rock NFL Mock Draft. Subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of when our next show drops. Pass the Rock.
a Lost Tribe sports show.